So they can see us, right? They can see us. They can hear us. All everything. They see <laughs> exact. They okay. see the. Th they see. <laughs> they see the three of us. Um. So yeah, that's fun. They so, can feel us if they reach out and touch their computer screen. It's correct. A life like representation. Yes. Uh huh. Yes, it's very. I think we all people smell are, like essential oils, mm -hmm. so they can picture that in mm -hmm. their mind. Mm -hmm. Except I don't think I've showered since Friday. Um, <laughs> so I just realized that this morning I was teaching and I was like, huh, I haven't showered since What's Friday. <laughs> it's Tuesday. So yeah, it's been a few days. It should have happened. Shower on Tuesday. Well, good. I'm glad this is virtual. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. So we are here. I think this is episode 76, maybe. Um, of the Yoga Pod cool. podcast. I like that you never know, Ken. I just don't. It, the numbers aren't important to me. Yeah. Yeah. It's like time. The universe doesn't understand numbers. That's right. I mean, really, it's just not that important. Um, Rated. It is. Um, we have so my I'm, my name's Ken. I'm the co-host here of the Yoga Pod podcast. We've got our, our friend Mylise. You want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Mylise Delgado, and my husband and I are the local owners of Yoga Pod Fort Collins. Awesome. And then we've got ha uh, Heather, I was going to say Hall and Heather. Um, oh. Paul and Heather. <laughs> Paul and Heather Clift. Uh, Paul and Heather Clift, owners of Samana Float um, in Fort Collins as well as Denver. You want to say hi, introduce yourselves? Hi, Facebook. I'm Paul. This is Heather. <laughs> um. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, yeah, we're excited to be on the podcast. Cool. Yeah, we've been talking about this for a while, um, and it finally happened. Now that everybody's in quarantine, you just got got a little more time. A little more time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, you 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 were both yoga practitioners, right? I mean, that's kind of that's been something that you all have done along the way. We, we cut our teeth. We, lived in, we used to live in Greeley. Uh, we cut our teeth with uh, Bikram uh, in Greeley uh, with Kyle. That mm -hmm. would have been, when was that? That was 2006 because it was two, the year Quincy was born. Yeah, about 2006 is when we started uh, going wow. consistently. And then we had moved to Summit County in 2008. And... Uh, had some great studios up there that we worked with for I don't know, Summit Hot Yoga. Summit Jim Hot and Yoga, Deb. Jim and Deb. And yeah, we've we've just been nonstop practicing since uh, since then. Mm -hmm. Sometimes falling out a little bit and then realizing we need to get back into it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And 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 now uh, now that we're in Fort Collins, we're loving yoga pot. Aww. Well, thank you so much. You know, we're um, we're so thankful to have you both be a part of the community. Ken, immediately when he met you both, were just like, you're going to love them. They're amazing people. They love yoga, which is like a prerequisite, obviously, for anyone we're going to hang out with. No, just kidding. We're, we're <laughs> equal friends with everyone. Um, but um, can you talk a little bit about why specifically the hot yoga um, that you were and are still so attracted to? Um, Paula, Paula is the one that actually started uh, Bikram Yoga. And then he told me, I had just had Quincy, our daughter, it was 2006. And he told me to, that I really needed to go and try it out. And I had done yoga at a few other places and was always like, I don't feel like I'm getting a workout. I don't feel like you know, anything's really happening. I mean, I'm stretching and I have all of this. And then Bikram just blew my mind with the heat and how much you would sweat. And you like felt like your heart rate was up, like something was really happening. And it, it just became a love of hot yoga. I mean, from there on, that is really the only yoga that I would do. Um, hmm. Yeah, we, we were, you know, there's, uh, for me, I had done, I had done some other yoga, uh, and there's some, there's something really, um, uh, almost, you know, uh, alter, uh, you know, kind of 
alter consciousness type of experience with sure. it. Yeah. And, a little <laughs> magical, kind of mystic. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, almost psychedelic in, at some times mm -hmm. and, and in some ways. There's, uh, we, I know that finding, but it's that, it's that, it's that stillness in between, right? Mm. That is really gets weird. Mm -hmm. And it, getting to that level of pushing, the pushing our body to that level. When you I feel think like I can't, I can't do how it. How much longer is this class? And then quieting that nervous system yeah. down again was just, it was just like, wait, there's really something magical to this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really, really something. And you know, it was funny when we lived up in Breckenridge and I, I had a really strong practice at summit, um, summit hot yoga with Jim and Deb. And I was pregnant with Charlie, our second child. And my doctor um, was telling me, don't do hot yoga when you're pregnant. Like, it, don't do it. And she would wow. always fill up in our class <laughs> when I was in there. And <laughs> she'd be the sweet guy and like, you should not be in here. And I'd always take my temperature. I'd always sit where I knew the coolest place of the room was. Like, I, I knew. You took care of yourself. I took care of myself. I was responsible. Yeah. And I didn't just start doing yoga when I was pregnant. Correct. Right? I had a really strong practice. So um, when Charlie was uh, being born, we ran into some pretty serious stuff with her. Like the cord was wrapped. I had to push like, like it was like, get this baby out or you're doing emergency C-section. Yeah, it was, it was scary. Wow. It, was, it was no joke that no joke. Like, we had to get the baby out yeah. immediately. They had the helicopter ready to bring her to children's. Like, it was it was serious. And Dr. Winfield just looked at me and she was like, all right, you disobeyed me, saying do hot yoga, prove to me that you can push this baby out. And <laughs> two, push, two, push. two pushes. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it is. I was like, I will never tell another one of my um, – patients to not do hot yoga if they have a practice of it she was blown away at yeah i mean like yoga i mean in in some respects we don't know exactly right but yeah. but it was quieting the mind and it was like this hurts just like sometimes yoga does and you're like just <laughs> focus focus and get it wow. done you know it was it was pretty cool yeah, I mean, that's cool. a brilliant story that who knows what, you know, what the outcome would have been if she didn't have a yoga practice. I mean, I hate to say that. Yeah. Yeah. To think about it that way, but um, yeah. yeah. How did I not know yeah, that? Why did so you not tell me that story before? How? Do, why, is, <laughs> why am I hearing this right now? What the hell is going on, Heather? I feel like I you're know, holding back. You're, just not, <laughs> you're not asking the right questions, Ken. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> So I'm so happy to hear that because we get a lot of women specifically asking about, you know, hot yoga and pregnancy. And, you know, um, Raja Tree, who is uh, Bikram's wife, had created a whole book of modifications um, to really talk about, you know, hot yoga during pregnancy. Because, again, depending on the practitioner, if you're doing it before, um, they say, you know, it's safe a lot of times to continue. Of course, every person is individual on their experience, of course, and, and I'm not a medical person by any means, but we have several teachers that practiced um, all through their, you know, pregnancy. I know Kyle's wife, Lisa, um, Kyle tells this great story about that Lisa took class, I think, the day that she gave birth, and um, she was in class, and she was doing her standing bow pulling pose, and because, you know, our joints are so much more um, loose when we're pregnant because of the relaxed and that, you know, softens everything, um, that she had her leg up behind her and then her belly was literally touching the ground and, you know, her arm was out immediately in front of her. And he's like, it's the most incredible thing I've ever seen, just like <laughs> her, her body during this practice. And yeah, and, and she, you know, had a, had a um, again, a, a, a just an easier time, I think, with uh, labor and everything like that. So um, I think it's interesting. They've also done some studies about like internal core temperature, that hot yoga, and I don't know if they've included the pregnancy aspect of it, but they've had people swallow thermometers mm -hmm. during practice, the hot yoga practice, to see that the core temperature does not increase um, during the practice, which obviously I think that's what people think immediately. They're like, oh, I'm going to cook my baby because <laughs> it's mm -hmm. inside my belly and I'm going to get hotter. But, you know, they, they have done some, some research that, that the internal temperature stays 
the same even during um, that time. So yeah, I'm, I'm happy to hear that. And it's so inspiring to just hear the impact of, of your story. Um, how do you, during quarantine, now being in this situation, I know personally for me, I'm missing hot yoga, something fierce, like my body, my mind, um, every day I wake up and say, I wish I could go to class. And of course, you know, I'm doing Ashtanga and some other practices at home because I know the importance of continuing a yoga practice, but it's not the top of my list. Um, what have you guys replaced your hot yoga practice with during this time? Um, I think, a, um, wine. A bottle of wine. <laughs> <laughs> It's not quite the same. I can't lie. I have been, I have, I did yoga maybe two days. Um, I did one with, with Charlie and I've been, I've, it, I have not practiced and I'm missing, I'm missing yoga really, really bad. Paul's been better than me. I've been, um, uh, we have a rowing machine. So I, I tried to hit the rowing machine for uh, just 20 minutes in the morning and um, uh, I've actually been throwing around a kettlebell occasionally, which is oh. really something unique for me, which has been fun. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, a, that's about it. And then just, you know, staying busy. I mean, as far as the physical practice, um, no. we've, we've been, we've been floating a lot, uh, because we need to make sure that, um, the maintenance of our tanks are upheld. Mm -hmm. uh, so <laughs> you say that with a yeah. with a grin. Hey, <laughs> you own you own the studio. I'm pretty sure you're social distancing while you're there. Social, social you distancing. got enough money in that place that you can certainly go use it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's been good. That's probably been the main lifesaver. Yeah, I like think on the lining. Yeah. yeah, for the mental aspect of it, of not being able to uh, is find is definitely finding some space uh for ourselves we, we feel really blessed that we actually have a, a space that we can go to for something like that mm -hmm. yeah can can you guys talk a little bit about floating i know um maybe there's people listening who have never done a float or um you know they they it just might be a new concept to them so can you share a little bit about what is it and how would somebody start a practice in floating yeah, I mean, your personal well, stories are great, too, around that, like how you came to it, because I think that really informs people as well. You know, it's so different for people. Yeah. yeah. So the, the, idea of, the idea of floating um, is it's a sensory deprivation. Uh, there's 11 inches of water in, in, in our tanks, and the rooms are private and, and individual. So um, 11 inches of water inside the tank with 1100 pounds of Epsom salt. So it creates a buoyancy effect. And then we heat the, the temperature of the water to uh, a skin responsive temperature. So around 94 degrees. So when you lay in there, you float on top of that and you don't actually feel the water, uh, the, the solution. Um, and you have a choice of light or, or actually some, some music, but of course, sensory deprivation was originally designed without any stimulus at all. And you lay in there for, uh, we, we do 90 minute sessions, although somebody can always do 60 minutes or 75 minutes, or if they feel like they're done after a session. Yeah, you can, can get, get out, out whenever, whenever, whenever your body tells you you're uh, done. We, we try to suggest people to go in for 60, at least 60 minutes because it's very much a, there's, there is some science behind that. And, Time can get a little weird. So sometimes when 90, we, we say 90 minutes, people might be a little apprehensive of it. Oh, 90 <laughs> minutes in there. That sounds like a long time. Sure. But, you know, after you float, you really realize that time gets a little tricky in there. It doesn't feel like 90 minutes often. Um, uh, and the, uh, the concept is when you have no stimulus inside the tank, what that does is it actually shuts down your, your brain. Uh, and drops you into a theta state, brainwave pattern. So that's the hypnagogic stage, uh, a, a very similar to like when you're waking up in the morning and you might uh, look at the alarm clock and then go back to bed and it doesn't feel like you fell back asleep, but you realize, oh man, it was like 45 minutes later or a half hour later or something. 
that's kind of that like in between uh, awake and asleep space that we try to get people into. And what, what that does is it drops somebody out of the sympathetic nervous system, which is what we're usually operating on and drops you into the parasympathetic nervous system. And the parasympathetic nervous system is considered the rest and digest. Uh, and our, uh, our bodies start to heal itself. Our nervous system kind of already knows what to do to heal itself. And that's the space we like to get into. Um, mentally, uh, it's extremely powerful. It resets uh, uh, circadian rhythms. So if rhythms are out of sync, it resets that after uh, 60, 90 minutes. Um, increases dopamine. Or, dopamine, serotonin, melatonin, oxytocin, and decreases cortisol levels. Mm -hmm. And, you know, those are all, you know, that's one of the first things I tell people when I give a walkthrough for them, if they are showing me signs of being a little apprehensive of being alone with themselves for 90 minutes or claustrophobic <laughs> or, you know, anything when you're talking to somebody about doing something that they've never done is I do tell people that within the first like 15, 20 minutes of your float, your cortisol levels are going to drop and it's going to get replaced with dopamine. So you're going to have this relaxing feeling come over you that will, probably help just put you more into yeah. that like more relaxation state yeah. because the sympathetic nervous system is our fight or flight that's what keeps us alive so when we can turn our brain off from being able to scan things especially when we turn the light off magic can happen in there i mean yeah. really cool things can happen for people in there so. for sure but we had our first float um in 2015 14 in Boulder at Isolate. Mm -hmm. And we lived up at the mountains and we went and floated and we drove home on a Friday of I-70. And we were just so chilled out. We couldn't believe how we were, relaxed. We weren't sure exactly <laughs> what happened, but we were, we were both like, wow, this is what? really, this is really cool. This yeah. is something uh, we wanted, wanted, wanted to do more of. I, I had been, um, I was a real estate uh, agent and uh, I was looking for a little bit of a transition out of real estate. And I had done uh, some coaching. I had done a, a lot of real estate coaching, but I also done some performance uh, coaching for athletes. And I was always looking for some cutting edge things that I could try and uh, provide. And came, came, I actually knew about floating from a long time ago, but came across floating again. And... Uh, uh, was like, yeah, we got we got to check this out, mm -hmm. and we did. We fell in love with it, and it was like, all right, you want to do this? So we we long long story short, we sold everything in Summit County, and then relocated mm -hmm. to Fort Collins and opened our center up in Denver the, for for the first center, and then uh, in May of 2016. Yep. And yeah, it was one of the, it was one of the kooky things that Paul has talked me into doing. He's had many. <laughs> many <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and this one, I was like, "That's what high five, know. Paul. Love it. Yeah, right. <laughs> Love the kooky ideas. Kooky ideas. She's she's my governor. Yeah, you know what I mean. That's right. It's the yeah. reason why you don't live on Mars right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that that's kind of how we got into it, and then you know we were like, well, let's just do it Paul and Heather style, and we did it a little bit differently with. Um, Superior float tanks, and we were one of the first float centers to have the float cabin in Colorado. I think we were the first. Oh yeah, we were the first. First set, yeah. float center to have the cabin, and Superior float tanks didn't have a cabin at the time. And Paul and I were looking at another company, and we worked with we worked with uh, we basically married a couple of companies together to create something, to, and then that kind of spurred that's that's that, that style had been around, but. Um, yeah, anyway, we worked with, intimately with the manufacturer yeah. to, to help develop that. Wow. So, yeah. yeah, so that was pretty cool. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, yeah, because those chambers, like the one that, what's the guy's name out of California? Crash. Crash, that he does. Those are like a very crude, it's like walking into a meat locker. You know, his are, they're like, they're like, you know, diamond plate on the outside. And it literally has like one of those like meat locker handles on it. And then it's pool liner on the inside. Have oh, you wow. ever wow. been one of those? 
yeah, it's bananas. You got walk in there and you're like, oh, you definitely made this, you know? He's and I mean, quite, he's, he's quite the character. He's yeah. in, um, he's, yeah, he's in Venice, Venice Beach. He's in, he's, the, the whole industry is rife with weirdos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Awesome. But it was cool. Yeah, but it was cool when this I went. happens in yoga sometimes too. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> Well, it was cool. It was cool the first time I went into one of his cabins, right? Because all I had ever done were the the kind of like lay down like a pod or whatever. And so when I went in there, I was like, oh, and it was a totally different experience than, than yeah. being a pod. So when, and then I had never been into a cabin since then. And then when I went to you guys, I was like, oh, this is like the refined, like this is where we were trying to get to with that, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, um, because it feels a lot more, yeah, it just feels safer, a little more sterile. Like, I don't know, you know, just all those things. Yeah. Um, did he Did he just say lock the place up when you're done? I've heard stories of people that have floated. Oh, yeah. He wasn't there afterwards. He was like, he let me in and he was like, cool, when you're done, just leave. You know? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, all right. And I'm like, how long do I have? He's like, as long as you need, man. I'm like, all right. <laughs> you know? Cool. Yeah. He's a wild man. Well, and that yeah. is just to be clear, Paul and Heather's places are not anything like that. <laughs> right, right, right. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The they, one will always I, be there when you get out of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're definitely it's such a, <laughs> it, It's just, I mean, it's like a spa like experience. And totally. It's just such a beautiful construction and build out and process and, and everything. And I think, you know, when somebody, I remember when they were first telling me about like what what is floating somebody said it's like you know meditating um for 20 minutes but you're getting a you know week's worth of meditation in that so if you're meditating for 90 minutes you've like checked off three weeks or whatever worth of of time and it really is i think anybody who either has a meditation practice or is interested in starting one it's a really great way to to find your path there um, besides the health benefits, just the the mental and emotional benefits are profound. And um, it's weird to explain it to somebody else because they're like, so I get in a, a tank of water and there's no light or sound or anything. And, and this is going to make me feel good. And you're like, yeah, I mean, it does. I promise. Just just it's, try it. And I promise. It's, it's um, you know, yoga and floating go so well together, right? There There is something really magical that happens in yoga that there's this combination of um you know increasing the resiliency and the stamina of the the nervous system i'm a i'm a i'm a big proponent of how important the nervous system is and uh how we need to start taking care of the nervous system better and yoga is a perfect example of that right is this uh the connection um of uh being able to relax in a stressful, a stressful environment uh, to, to create the resiliency so we can take it out, you know, to the world and be able to do more and, and be more, you know, fo focus that and develop our focus. And when things get stressful out in, in the real world, you know, we can take our yoga practice to that uh, of, of like, oh, I should just breathe through this mm -hmm. right now or, you know, just relax into this. And it's the same thing with the float tank. It's very much... Um, uh, practice on relaxing the nervous system and experiencing the uh, experiencing the opportunity you know having the opportunity to have that experience of going that deep with the nervous system that relaxed and that leads to exactly that which is then take that to your yoga practice because you know it's unlikely that somebody's going to be able to float every day um, but so it's like a springboard of these different states of consciousness that we can uh, experience and then take that into the yoga practice like oh yeah i remember what this feels like because i had this happen in the, in the float tank mm -hmm. yeah Ed yeah. edges yeah coming up, with, coming coming up on the yeah. edges and 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 because you'll have your floats where you're laying there and you're just like oh i'm so annoyed right now you know like <laughs> what's going on just like in yoga where you're like I was I'm tired this morning. I don't want to do that. But then you get it done and you push through it and you're like, awesome. There's, there's something, there's something, 
there's something really magical, I think, that, you know, you keep saying that, but there's something magical that happens with, and the, and the, and the word yoga, right, in Sanskrit is the, is union. Uh, come, you know, combining the higher divine with more of this conscious level. And that happens in the float tank, which is so cool, is weird things start happening when you start floating a lot. Like <laughs> stuff starts shedding off that you don't necessarily need or serves you anymore. And I think that happens with yoga as well. Um, and it's that combination of like slowing down enough, finding that space where we can be relaxed enough to be creative because that's, that's a fact. We know this, we know some things are facts, right? When we take time for ourselves, when we slow down enough to drop into these states of consciousness, we become more creative. We become more loving. We become more involved with the, our community. We start uh, dropping a lot of the BS that doesn't serve us anymore. And as we all know, it's difficult to find time and place in, in our current world of being able to do that. And that's ultimately what we're doing is we're kind of in a way selling back people their time <laughs> for yeah. that experience for them to go out and take that to be creative out in the, out in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's, there's so much there, Paul, I couldn't agree more. And, you know, we, we've been doing a lot of um, philosophical, you know, um, yoga education and, you know, one of the big things that stands out to me is in the yoga sutras, one of the, you know, first definitions of yoga is stilling the fluctuations of thought of the mind. Yeah. And that stilling is the only way you can actually assess or understand anything that's happening internally. And we are, there's so many distractions in the outside world that it's easy to turn your focus outward and that's why people always talk about yoga is an inward practice because you're removing those distractions and there's so many uh, weird things that become revealed if you do turn that journey inside and for sure yoga and floating are two methods to help you achieve that and I think of it like a beaten path on the trail is like once you start walking that you know it becomes more evident where that path is and so the more you walk that path, it's easier to find that, you know, the end of that trail again. And so, yeah, floating and yoga are, are creating that opportunity um, to go along that path. Or, yeah, you can't float every way, but here's how I go there in my brain. Here's how I learn to breathe through times that are troubling. And, you know, it's interesting, too, when you talk about freeing yourself up for creativity, the idea in all these advances in technology is so that we are not doing, you know, some of these manual things that we've had to do for so many years um, that with advances in technology should free us up to be more creative and create more things and automate more things so that we can make, you know, the world a more beautiful place. And so it's interesting to have to think about that in terms of how do we free ourselves up to be innovative and how do we free ourselves up to conquer some of these challenges that you know, we may be just putting ourselves in a rut, and, but we can't seem to, to get past. And it's fascinating, especially if you look at what's happening in our world with Corona and, and all these other things, the idea of self-care so, and mental health is so important right now. There's so many oh, people yeah. talking about the emotional impacts of, you know, what, what this is doing to people, changing their entire way of life. Um, now, are you guys, you guys are, are shut currently, or no, you guys are, okay. We are, Denver, Denver uh, we're still shut in Denver, but uh, Fort Collins, we uh, technically could be open, but we're gonna uh, work on opening them up at the same time, which uh, is gonna be pretty close in the near future, yeah. Like, with, we're hoping like within a week. Yeah, we, we just have to get everybody trained on the same new cleaning protocols and get a few we started some projects down in Denver since we were closed and we just have to finish those up um and just making sure everybody and everyone knows what we're doing and feels we're trying, safe we're and we're trying to be a little skillful with what we're doing rather than just jump in yeah. uh, make sure that we're um uh, keeping the patrons safe as well as the staff and everybody feels comfortable with what is happening so 
you know, it's, it's, it's not just like, oh, we can open, let's open it. We're, 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 it's a little bit more complex than that. Right. Did yeah. you guys know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. That totally makes sense. One of the things that I, I find so fascinating about floating is the feeling of like, and I think it's the thing that I miss the most is getting in there and not knowing what's going to happen. Right. It's that, and it's the same thing I think that happens in yoga as well, right? Like you get in there and for me at least, there's always like some trepidation, you know? Like I still haven't gotten past that part of stepping in the tank and being like, and lying down and like my heart starts to beat a little bit faster for sure, you know? <laughs> like I start to have that weird like, uh, and then I'm like, at some point I start to calm down. And I think that same thing happens when, you know, we start a yoga practice, you know, where it's like, oh, what did I get myself into? You know, it's like with. Totally. Yeah. It's almost like, uh, yeah, your yoga practice starts before the yoga class even happens. Like if, if you're used to, if you're used to that front row and the front row is full, mm -hmm. you got to go somewhere else in the class and you might have a little edge with that, that you got to be next to the window or something. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, oh man, like, you know what I mean? Like the practice just started right then and there, you know? Oh so, yeah. <laughs> Well, you're in my spot or whatever yeah. whatever the edge is you know <laughs> sure yeah well and i think there's something to be learned from that like in the in the process that we're in right now right like i think going and this is where it, it, maybe my conversation has a little bit of a point is that we're kind of in that stage right before opening up where it's like it's that trepidation of like it's the not knowing right mm -hmm. that's so like uh, you know like and Absolutely. yeah, and it's going to be that way for a little bit until we kind of find our feet again in a very different, I think, you know, and I, I don't know that I speak for all of us, but at least we all had a routine, right? Like we knew, you knew what to do when you got there in the morning, all your employees knew what to do. Everybody was trained. Same thing at the yoga studio, you know, all the teachers knew what they needed to do. And now it's kind of, it's, it's all new, you know, and that trepidation that like, not knowing is right there um, and it comes with and, and it'll happen I believe you know with our students and with your clients as well right they're gonna they're gonna have a different experience now because of that yeah. and I think that's a really interesting you know way to kind of look at it is like oh yeah we're at that like beginning stage again but with way more knowledge you know Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we're I think we're lucky as well being in uh, both in, 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 in industries that you know the clientele and the you know participants are um, much more relaxed into <laughs> how things are going to transition. Yeah, you, you yeah. Know what I mean? Like we're, we're not gonna, Yeah, we're we're really lucky with the, the people we're, we're involved with. I think. Yeah, they're going to they're oh, be for sure. you know, yeah. with like, oh, okay, we have to do it this way. I'm, I'm hoping. I, I, yeah. I totally agree. And there's, there's a sense of gratitude there that I think is really impressive. Like we've just had such an outpouring of support, you know, from our community of people that are just so grateful to have, you know, the streaming classes and just to have that connection to something that they're passionate about. It's, it's, I don't know that every industry has that same luxury of people being so thankful that, that they have a connection to a community still. So it's, I, I'm, you know, and I do, it's so interesting to kind of look at the future of this and how do we continue to serve our communities and, um, you know, give them, because we obviously are in these businesses because it's our, it's more than just a business opportunity. It's something we love. We're passionate about it. We truly believe in it. We know it'll make people's lives better. So that's my ultimate goal is how do we get back to a point where we're offering this, keeping everybody safe, you know, giving the community what they need. And yeah, they're, they're happy to have anything, but that, that's what's running through my head is, you know, like what's the time frame and what does it look like in the, you know, the next year and the next two years, um, which obviously nobody has the answers for. Yeah, I, yeah. Got, I got out of a flow uh a couple like a week ago and i was i was mad and i was sad and i had some tears and i was like grumpy because i couldn't i can't i can't float people right now 
Mm. And it is, it is, it is so good. People are needing this. It just, just a little quiet to get out of the house from your kids, you know, <laughs> like all the shit that's going on. It's just, you know, it's like, from your spouse. From your spouse. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was, it was just like, please, I want to bring, I want this more, more than, more than ever is, is the importance of, uh, of being able to provide this. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, it just get, we just want to get back into a, providing that for people because once people start floating again, you know, I, I think, like we always see that 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 look that they have after their float, you know, the, the, that magic float that they have, which mm-hmm. is just like they don't know what to say. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. They don't, they're just kind of like they just come well, out I'm like not sure what happened, but I'm I feel amazing. Sure. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't know what just happened in there, you know. And, and <laughs> clean, being clean and safe was our main priority before COVID. So even yeah. now, afterwards, when people are like, well you can be open. Why aren't you open? And it's because those two things are still even more so now more important to Paul and I than anything. And like, just to go back to what Paul was saying, we just want to make sure, and I'm sure you guys are the same way that our staff knows exactly what to do, you know, and, and we all are on the same page and there isn't anything that we could jeopardize the health of our tanks, the health of the staff or the customer that, that we're really willing to just say, okay, come on in. I mean, it's, it's a lot different than that. There is a lot of trepidation with, with that. And yeah. that's, yeah, it's, it's confusing because people are like, well, why, I don't get it. Why won't you open, you know? And sure. But, but it's nice to feel wanted. Right. I mean, that's the, <laughs> it's crazy. Like you start to realize like, you know, absence makes you know heart grow fonder and that's that is the truth you know it's like the support we've had the support that we've had from our floaters has been has been amazing and beautiful and you know i I just uh remember sticking with us and like yeah yeah i mean yeah we're gonna we're gonna really focus uh uh, a lot on on the first responders and the healthcare providers of figuring out ways to get them in um uh you know and the grocery store workers and everybody they, yeah, the, yeah i mean whatever. everyone who was on the front lines of this you know they all need to come in and float too so but we just have absolutely. to absolutely yeah just make sure that we're doing it appropriately and i don't know it's it's weird <laughs> it's definitely it is it's so weird it's it's the weirdest time and you know we just talking to all the other teachers and, you know, uh, our leadership team, it's, it's, it's like you're in the matrix. You don't even know like what each day is going to bring. There's no sense of time. And what are my feelings today? I have no idea. Maybe I'm happy. Maybe I'm sad. I don't know. <laughs> it's like, mm-hmm. it's, it's the weirdest thing ever. And I think um, for our, the, for me, a driving force is getting back to that point where you know, we can provide something to people that will help them, you know, find that path and, you know, their sense of what's happening in this time, which I truly believe yoga, floating, those are, are two ways to get to that point. But um, it seems at times insurmountable, especially when you look at like the yoga aspects of it, where, you know, you have a mat, you know, right next to each other normally, and it's this awesome energy of, you know, kind of this intimate space and you're all sweating together and what does a class look like in the future where mats are six feet apart and you you know can't arrive 30 minutes early and interact with people in your class and and stuff but at the end of the day I do know this hot yoga is still I mean and any type of yoga but hot yoga specifically people want that it's a viable thing that people are are if we can do it right, they're going to come back to their mats and they want to be there and they want to be in that community and find a way to make that work. And same thing with floating. Once people have started floating and know the benefits, there's no going back from that. You, you, <laughs> you need that in your life um, just to, to function as a normal human being. So, you know, I hope, I know we'll all stay committed to finding that path, but it, it feels insurmountable right now, but 
we'll figure it out, I'm sure. It's, it's, it's going to be tricky. I think that we're going to, it's going to, uh, creativity, the creativity. I think this is, as, as hard as it is, I think that it also is, is potentially creating uh, some opportunities that, you know, are maybe in place we're not aware of that are going to be created from this. I, I am optimistic that there's going to be some exciting things that we can, we can develop from this. Um, uh, you know, I am, but, but it, it, with that being said, I'm also, all, yeah, a little, a little concerned that how this is going to change uh, uh, the future culturally, you know, um, and, you know, there is, there is, we're, we're quarantined, but there is something also, it's like the same, at the same time, we're also realizing how connected we are, right? <laughs> There's kind of this combination, it's like, we're all sharing potentially these things that go on with all of us and how much this is connecting us, but we're all separate. So it's like, you know, an interest, interesting time, you know, uh, exoterically, esoterically, you know, uh, like a combination of both <laughs> the inward and the outward. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And I think, I think taking what, you know, we've learned in yoga and taking what we've learned from floating and like now is the time, right? <laughs> like now is the time where we take all that work that we've put in on the mat and in the tank and it's like, oh shit. Yeah. Like I got this, you know, yeah. breathe. Yeah. Like, you know, like what's really important, you know, like, it's it's that sense of like everything feels like it's being kind of stripped away right and then you get to come back to this center of like oh what's really important oh my family food water that's kind of it like mm -hmm. other than that <laughs> like everything else is kind of you know whatever um and yeah it's a, i think it's a really interesting time and i agree with you paul i think that there are going to be some magnificent things that come out of it you know um creatively and energetically and and all that as well yeah i uh, there was um it was after the black plague they um there was this they, they, they started doing these ecstatic dances for like weeks at a time yeah that uh is you know it was, it was kind of an interesting story i don't know i don't know the story in depth it was told to me secondhand but about um that they were so excited that that it was, it had passed that they started to get together and do like this ecstatic dancing for like weeks on at a time. Cool. Then, you know, I mean like, yeah, so how cool does that sound? You know what I mean? We, we need to get to that yeah. point where we're all yeah. dancing again. <laughs> to right. Maybe Ken will shower before his ecstatic dance. <laughs> no, nobody gets to shower by the way. Oh. <laughs> I'll dance with you, Ken. Oh, thanks, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there's, there's opportunity now for a lot of innovation, a lot of beauty to happen. And I think, you know, it, it, it takes, it's almost like our worlds have been put into a deprivation tank, right? You have, you're depriving yourself of all of these experiences that you're used to, and that's how you operate. And that, right. I was thinking about that on Mother's Day when, we couldn't go out and sit down at a restaurant, which is something I love to do and just the experience of that. And that goes back to this whole yogic idea of, you know, desire leads to all these negative things that you're desiring something else. And um, the attachment to those things is really what causes the suffering. So it's definitely forced me in a really unique way to look at like, what do I desire? And why do I desire it? What is this doing for me? How is it making me feel? that I could get without that. Why do I want to buy something on Amazon? Why do I want to go bake another loaf of bread? <laughs> because it's like what right. everybody is doing, you're baking bread. So, you know, it, it's, it's a really interesting way of cutting off these normal ways of operating, which again, I think goes back to the floating idea of cutting off your normal way of operating and being alone with yourself and the stimulus that you normally operate by. So. Absolutely. And, and like exactly what you, you and Ken are saying is like, there's this, there's this opportunity about figuring out how to quiet the nervous system. Cause when, when we're still right, when we find stillness, it's like the center of, it's the center of the tornado, right? It's, it's, the, it's the quietness. So all this, all this, all this 
BS that's swirling around us when we can quiet the nervous system and when we practice yoga to be able to quiet the nervous system in a stressful moment or floating of being able to what that what that feels like that that visceral and and, and spiritual and mental experience of that is like bringing that home because right now exactly what Ken said more than ever is, is the time is now to bring those things that we had we had been working on and continue the practice right yeah because it is a tornado out there you know and and <laughs> we need to, we need to have our center we need to have be grounded uh, for our families for our communities you know for our tribe and you know what I'm seeing right now that I think is really really cool is the be kind um campaign and basically what that is is respecting people's ideas if they're ready to go out in public or not you know and not having the judgments of people that maybe aren't ready to go out and you know it's like For just sure. be kind just just hold those people with love and know that they're still scared or if Someone wants to wear a mask. I mean, all these people getting beat up because stores are asking them to wear masks and stuff. It's, it's just, we're all, we're all in this together. I mean, they say that, but it's like, we just, I think just learning and just staying kind to one another is something that really needs to be important right now as well. And we went, we went on mother's day to, to, to my parents, uh, uh, and saw my dad, and my dad is really concerned about COVID, and rightfully so. He's 80 years old, and he's grumpy, and he needs a <laughs> hug so bad. Like, like that's what he like. It's like I just I'm looking at him, and I'm like, dude, you're so grumpy. I want to. I just want to give you a hug, you know. But I can't, right? And we gotta kind of respect his concern with that. But it's like maybe we can just suit him up in something, you know, and just hug the crap out. Yeah. <laughs> well, some people like a, a straight jacket does a self hug, you know. <laughs> Get him like the Temple Grandin hug machine or something. <laughs> she put herself in that, cranked yeah. herself up. Anyway, yeah. Love it. Yeah. So you guys, when you look at your business and taking the kind of that be kind idea into place. Do you anticipate um, a lower attendance for for the tanks based on kind of that phased approach of people maybe being, you know, trepidatious about returning out? Um, yeah, I think I think that's in, I think that's inevitable. Um, we're we're going to be working a lot on educating people exactly how and what we do so people feel comfortable uh, coming in. You know, this, we, we, the float industry actually has a little history with this type of thing, actually. Mm -hmm. So, uh, floating became extremely popular in the late seventies going into the early eighties. Um, very popular. I mean, they were, they were starting to make movies that were based, you know, like, uh, altered states it was a movie in 1980 with William Hurt, you know? Uh, so there's these, these things that were happening culturally, like, a lot of celebrities were floating and it was the float centers were popping up all over the place. And then, the, and then AIDS came along mm -hmm. and everybody was really confused about how you can contract AIDS and it absolutely killed hot tubs, pools and float tanks, that whole industry, the whole industry went away. Mm -hmm. and, it, and, wow. and until about eight years ago, the reemergence of it, you know, for, with people from like Joe Rogan. With floating hot tubs and, came back and, earlier than that. But, but with yeah. So there was, so there was, you know, it, it, it was uh, not understanding certain things and the lack of education that really had a tough time for people to feel comfortable to come back into certain things. So again, it's going to, it's going to need to be, how do we educate people? And, you know, we didn't have the internet uh, and as much opportunity to, to learn about this. We didn't have Facebook, like doing something like this, where we can talk about what our protocols are. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, so there are those concerns. Uh, I mean, we could be down 50%. We, we have, we have no idea. We, we could, we could, we could, you know, in some respects be doing the same amount. I have no idea. People could be just really excited about getting out and going and doing something and 
floating being one of the safest possible things to go and do, uh, we could be busy. I, I don't, I, we don't, we have no idea. I hope we're busy because people are going to float. They're going to be like, thank God. You're open. <laughs> well, can you yeah. explain that? Can you explain that too? Why it's one of the safest things? I mean, to me, it makes sense, but I think for a lot of people, it's like, Oh, you're, you're like sharing water with people. There's a shower. Like there's all these things that are, you know, pot potentially contaminated. But I think if you walk through why, you know, the, the safety that just happens naturally within that tank, um, I think it makes a lot of sense. Well, one of the, one of the first obvious things in a float tank is the amount of salt that's sure. in, in the water. Um, nothing can grow in salinity of that. Yeah, there's, there's no, there's nothing, uh, there's no microbes or, or actually I take that back. There's one microbe that has been, uh, known to grow in that much salinity and it's like in some weird desert or something. I don't, I have no idea. Like, like, yeah, it, it, it's not, it's not, it doesn't affect humans at all anyway. So there's actually that highest, that high of uh, magnesium sulfate. That's what Epsom salt is. Uh, that high of a uh, content of that, nothing grows in the water. Mm -hmm. But we also, so our filtration system is we use hydrogen peroxide. So the, the tanks are, the tanks are dosed with about just a hundred parts per million hydrogen peroxide. Um, and uh, it go when it, the filtration system also has a UV light. So it passes through the UV light to clean it. And then we also- So if there, not to interrupt, but if there was anything in the water, what would happen is the hydrogen peroxide would surround it. Attached to the free attached radical. Attached to the free radical, then go through the filtration system and get destroyed by the UV light. Kind of blows it up. Wow. So, yeah. And then on top of that, that would be well enough for the filtration system. But on top of that, we also uh, have an ozonator, which actually ozonates the water. And Air and walls. Yeah, and yeah. So, the, so the ozonator is basically runs for um, about through the filtration period about seven minutes. And basically that's putting the ozonating in the water. And that actually off gases. And the off gas of the ozonator in the tank actually sterilizes the, the air inside the tank. In between, so this is in between floats. Uh, sterilizes wow. the air. And it can actually, it actually hits the, uh, the, the, the the surfaces outside of the water as well. And then on top of that, what we do is we go through with uh, another type of uh, uh, technology, which is an aqueous water that is an ozonated water that we can spray on surfaces. Um, and if anybody wants to geek out on that, there's a company called Tersano and Tersano does, uh, uh, sells these sells these units and the cool thing about that is that it breaks down into water so it, it's no residual solvents um no chemicals no chemicals and it they've done studies on uh on this equipment already with sars and mars and i believe another type of corona that was a uh, virus that had been tested prior to all of this happening so th they actually have these awesome studies 99.9% wow. uh, kills all of it within one minute. So we go through and spray down the, the showers. That's, that's a new protocol. That's, that's new. That's a new yep. Yeah, yeah. So we're going down and spraying in showers and all the, the handles and the hot spots and all, and all of that as well. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that that's, you know, for people not particularly interested in safety, that's probably a really long description and not all that interesting, right? But for people... <laughs> that are really interested in safety and understanding like why that's like why it's a safe place to go. I think it's really important that people like information that's power, you know? And so yeah. people understanding what it is that makes that safe, I think is really important. And it's not just like some woo woo, like BS, like, Oh, we just put a bunch of incense in there and light some sage and everything's cool. You know, like, yeah. like, no, it's a different kind of cleaning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do that as well, but yeah, understood, you know, um, yeah. but I think it's, oh, it is. It's, it's, it's important. And we're quarantined, man. I mean, we, you know, <laughs> you're not, you're not hanging out with anybody. We have, we have a half hour, about a half hour in between each float to completely sanitize the room. It's, it's, 
and and there's no there's there's not a lot of people that come through at this yeah you can't even get 10 people in there if every cabin was full and you had four people working it still wouldn't be 10 people in there <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah yeah so, so it's it, it'll it's going to be interesting we're getting the website updated so that's one of the first things that's on our frequently asked questions is cool. going to answer that question how are you going to keep us safe from yeah. covid well we do have we have a couple questions and then i'll let you go but we have we have some comments as well as some questions from facebook so Missy was asking if you guys are open and I, I just commented back like that you weren't open yet. You've been open previously, but you're not open now. Um, but look for announcements, I'm guessing, in the next week to 10 days um, about when you'll be open. Cool. Um, um, email or social media. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, and then Gretchen said um, – she was thinking about you guys and loves the space. Um, and then Kat was saying that she couldn't believe how gorgeous the cabins were and relaxing. Oh. The showers are so perfect, she said. So, Yay. Yeah. So thank you. She also yeah. liked the fun I, temperature fact that you threw out, my lease, about core temperature. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Well, I think it's it's a perfect uh, partnership floating yoga. I hope that, you know, all of our yoga pod Fort Collins members can, um, you know, continue to take their practice virtually. But then as soon as you guys open, you know, I hope anybody who hasn't tried it can, can schedule a flow and just see the benefits on how it really will further their practice and, and just help keep them in that um, good mental state. And so we're, we're just so thankful to have you guys as friends and neighbors and, you know, people who are also um, love yoga and understand, um, you know, what it feels like to, to be part of that yoga community. We're really thankful you guys are in town. No. Hey, li Same likewise. To yeah, likewise. Bir birds of a feather. I mean, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. Like just floating, you know, is just floating, but floating in yoga is that's some special sauce right there. It really is. One, one yoga, of my guys. That's right. <laughs> Sloga. Sloga. I've been, I've been, I've been, doing, Sloga. I've been doing these, like, these, these weird stretches in the day. Hold on, sweetheart. And, oh, and nice. I was, I was like, I should come up with a, with a, a little a series or uh, uh, for some, some tanks. So the, some there you Sloga. go. Yeah, especially for that big yeah. tank. Yeah, especially that big tank. You could, you could get it on in there. <laughs> Don't get any of that salt water in your eyes. Holy moly. <laughs> Did you just say get it on, Ken? What are yep, you? Yep, I said you can get on? it on in that tank. <laughs> you just said that. Yep. This is why, Ken. I didn't mean it that you way. <laughs> get after it. That's what I meant to say. You can get after oh, it. Oh, okay. Thanks. Thanks for We're clarifying. We're not that kind of <laughs> Yep, that's what I was trying to say. <laughs> All right. Well, we really appreciate you all coming on. Um, you want to send them to the pod or your uh, social media and that sort of stuff, Heather, Paul, where, where uh, can they find that? you guys? Yeah. Your social media and website. Send them if they have questions. Yeah. 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 What, yeah. What's, what is your oh. social media? <laughs> your oh, I'm like, yeah. Samanafloat.com uh, <laughs> okay. or Samanafloat on Instagram or Facebook. Awesome. Right yep. On. And like, that's S A M A N A. Yes. Yeah. Which is a, sa a Sanskrit word. Yes. But you didn't it's know the, that. In yes. Between breath. Um, uh, and so it's that, that little inward balancing spot in between the in and the out breath. Cool. That's a good spot, isn't it? We yeah. Didn't, we yeah, did yeah. not know that when we got the name. No. Buddha, Buddha was a Samana as well. The Samanas were a nomadic uh, yeah. group that relinquish all possessions and you know we're nomadic traveling around oh. we didn't know that we, we it was a made up, it was a made-up name samana was actually we were gonna we were gonna name it semaphore which is nautical terminology and then oh, uh, na at the end and then is NA the salt. Is salt in the periodic table and so our like, cube is the salt molecule it's sodium fluoride no so the salt the cube isn't epsom salt it, well yeah but it works it's salt yeah Anyway, so it was some, uh, some semaphore, but some mana, and then we're like, that sounds so good. Yeah. And it just kept rolling off our tongues, and, and then all of a sudden, it was like clicked, and then all of a sudden, you know, it was like, oh, wait, 
Yogi's and this is this, we were, it, 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 that name chose us. We didn't choose that. Yeah, name. that's awesome. <laughs> that's that was, awesome. Yeah, it was really cool. Um, yeah, but you guys, anyone with any questions, feel free. Um, ask us questions on social media. Leave us a message. Um, phone number in Denver is 720-573-8744. Um, you will get the answering machine, but we are checking messages daily. And then Fort Collins is 970-890-1218. If you, if you feel, if you, if, if you feel inkling too that you want to come and take a tour, oftentimes if uh, we have a room open, we can give a tour cool. um, of a room to show people what it looks like. But We're just asking for phone calls before that happens. Well, I mean, yeah, or, and we are just north of Whole Foods, um, the Whole Foods parking lot on the north side. The, um, Next to Sacred Owl. The Sacred Owl Wellness there, and some jujitsu, the jujitsu guys are over there. Yeah, and McMahon. Compass, yeah. compass School. So, cool. Yeah. yeah. Come see awesome. us. Awesome. Thanks guys. so much for coming on. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, guys. We'll see everyone uh, next week. We're going to do a members-only podcast. So it's going to be all our members can come on Zoom, and we can all chat live. So that'll be fun. So join us. Thanks. That'll be fun. Cool. Bye, Bye. Bye guys. Bye.